How's it going, fish keepers? Aqua Alex here, and it's time for our second episode of Species Highlight here on the AC Tropical Fish 1993 YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to highlight another one of my favorite saltwater fish. This fish is a very easy fish that can be kept by beginners, and it's a fish with tremendous color and personality. This fish calls Indo-Pacific from Western Indonesia to Taiwan and the Great Barrier Reef home. Some species of this fish also call Sumatra home. I am talking about a species of clownfish, aka Nemo, but not just any ordinary clownfish, not your Acelarus clowns or your Pecula clowns. I'm talking about the biggest clownfish known to man. It also happens to be my favorite clownfish of all time. I am talking about the maroon clownfish. I've kept the white striped maroon clownfish and the gold stripe maroon and I must say from personal experience the maroon clowns are the best looking clowns for me behind the black and white Ocellaris clowns what you're looking at right now is my beauty this is my sexy gold stripe maroon clownfish what you're watching in the video is my maroon clown my gold stripe I really love this fish. So gorgeous. I love maroon clownfish because of their deep red coloration with the bold stripes. Now, just like the Ocellaris and Percula clowns, maroons come in many forms. You've got your gold stripe maroon, your white stripe maroon, you've got a gold flake maroon, a gold dot maroon, a gold nugget maroon, Morse code maroon, and lightning maroon clownfish are just some to name a few. Now a gold dot is just that, it's a maroon with a dot that turns gold. A gold flake maroon has some mist barring and a dot that turns gold. And of course a lightning maroon has some uh, bars that are shaped like lightning. And the lightning maroons happen to be the most expensive clownfish that I've ever seen up here, in my, at least in my area. Now, in case you want a maroon clownfish after seeing my gorgeous one, I'm going to discuss caring for the maroon clownfish right now. Now, the first thing to consider when wanting a maroon clownfish is knowing that these clownfish are perhaps the largest of all clownfish. Maroon clownfish grow up to 6.5 inches. That's right, six and a half inches the maroon clowns get, compared to Perculas and Ocellaris only getting four inches. So, tank size for a maroon clown, I'm gonna say is 40 gallon breeders and up. They are not suited for nano tanks. And it really irks me because I've seen people posting pictures and videos of maroon clownfish in nano cubes and nano tanks. They really belong in a 40 gallon breeder, 55, 75, 80, 90, and 100 and up because they do get very big. Now, now that we know how big they get and what tank size they require, I want to share an inter interesting fact about the maroons. Now there are two distinct geographic variants. One has white bars and the other has yellowish or golden bars and comes from Sumatra and maybe Eastern Java. And that's the one I have, the gold shirt maroon. A new strain collected from New Guinea off of Fisherman's Island was imported in 2012. The bearing of the common species was replaced with a netting or lightning type pattering on this fish. So instead of a normal barring, the fish had a lightning pattern, which is pretty cool. Now, do you know that maroons have spines on their cheek area and their scales are smaller than other clownfish? 
Now, maroon clowns are very easy to keep. They're very hardy as long as water conditions are acceptable. They make a great fish for the beginning aquarist, but they are aggressive, which will limit the selection of tank mates. The biggest concern with these fish is if you're keeping a pair. A moody, aggressive female picking on the male will cause a great deal of stress, which will eventually mean a sick fish. So, maroon clownfish are very hard to pair up. I tried it once with a uh, white striped clownfish that was a little bit larger than the one I had. The one that I have now, the gold striped maroon. The gold striped maroon ended up beating up to death. Killed the poor thing. So, I recommend trying a smaller maroon clown than what you have originally. And I'm going to try that next and see what happens. Now, it is recommended when keeping a pair to have a larger tank and provide a large anemone or a lot of rock work with hiding places that the female cannot fit into. I've got a lot of rock work in my tank, so hopefully if I add a couple smaller males, it should work out. Now, maroon clowns are omnivores, so they'll eat a lot of meat. It is important that you feed a variety of fresh or frozen meaty foods. You can feed them myesis shrimp, brine shrimp, finely chopped fish, and chopped mussels. I also do uh, blood worms. I also do pellets, flakes, market shrimp. My maroon eats everything. A healthy maroon clownfish is like an Oscar. It'll eat anything. Now, tank mates for maroon clownfish. They are not picky, and they are not aggressive to other fish. They are mostly just aggressive to other species of clownfish and defending their territory. So make sure to not keep more than one maroon clownfish in an aquarium, unless it's a very large aquarium, or it's a mated pair. Also, do not keep any other species of clownfish with the maroon clowns. So tank mates, you can have your cardinals, you can have damsels, royal gramas, you can have angelfish, you can have um, dwarf lionfish, you can have hawkfish, fox faces, gobies, pretty much anything that's not going to be able to eat the maroon clown. They'll do awesome in a reef tank as well with inverts and coral. Now, one of the things that I hear a lot of when I'm talking about clownfish is the requirement of anemones in their system or their aquarium. Well, most maroon clowns are captive bred. This means that an anemone is not required and it may not um, adapt to hosting an anemone in captivity. So it really is a waste of money trying because it may not happen. But if you want an anemone, it is suggested to use a bubble tip anemone because that is what the maroon clownfish host in the wild. Now the maroon clownfish is the most aggressive of all clownfish. They can be kept in a reef setting or a fish only setting, but they can be very territorial and aggressive. They are aggressive even when attempting to form a male and female pair. Just putting two juveniles together does not always result in a pairing, but may result in a death since, unlike other clownfish, they will fight among themselves. An aquarist will have better success by choosing an obvious large female and small male, but watch the aggression from the female so he does not end up bludgeoned to death. Trying a large female and several males would be suggestive suggested, but be ready to remove the ones who are not accepted and provide areas for them to hide that the female cannot fit in. Alright, I hope that provides a lot of information on the maroon clownfish for you. If you have any additional questions, please post them in the comment section below. Now, our next species highlights, highlights going to be on Sunday, and it's going to be on the Lawnmower Blenny, another wonderful saltwater species. So join me Sunday to learn about the Lawnmower Blenny. 
As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed my gold striped maroon. And I hope you will get a maroon clownfish for yourself. Like, comment, and subscribe. Aqua Alex out!